हेलो शापोर जो हाउ आर यू हेलो सर आई एम फाइन आई होप यू आर डूइंग फाइन टू यस आई एम डूइंग वेरी फाइन एंड बिग बिग कांग्रेचुलेशंस ऑन विनिंग नॉट वन बट टू गोल्ड मेडल्स इन द एशियन यूथ चैंपियनशिप हाउ इज द फीलिंग हां थैंक यू सो मच सर इट फील्स वेरी नाइस एक्चुअली इट फील इट वाज जस्ट अ डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ फीलिंग व्हेन द नेशनल एंथम वाज प्लेड लाइक आई कुड विन टू गोल्स फॉर द कंट्री सो जस्ट वन थिंग लाइक Happier if I uh, could also have won a medal in blitz, but I just missed it for, uh, by tie breaks. Okay. Other than that, I am really happy. Yeah. So okay, but two medals for the country and also in such a big stage. Uh, it is the Asian okay. Youth, of course. Lot of strong players were there. So yeah. overall, uh, how did you like the experience? Is it was in Indonesia, if I am not mistaken, right? Yeah, it was held in Bali, Indonesia. The place is also really beautiful. the okay. overall experience was very nice like all the teammates uh, indian delegation all the other parents uh, they were very helpful and i am really happy because uh, this is actually my second tour without my parents like uh, okay. never have uh, i had traveled to world in last month only in september mm-hmm. and uh, never ever before that i have been anywhere without my parents so i think okay. I'm uh getting a bit dependent on myself, so I am happy about that, and also I am happy about my quality of my playing. Yeah. That's awesome. So uh, I guess this is your second tournament back to back. First of yeah. all, there was the World Youth, I believe, and then yeah. there was Asian Youth, right? Yes. Yeah. Right, and the World Youth was held uh in which country? Ah, uh, it was held in Batumi, Georgia. Okay, it was held in Batumi, right? In Batumi, also 2018 Chess Olympiad was held. So yeah, of course a great place. And you great mentioned place. that you, ah uh, yes, and uh, you mentioned that you are traveling alone. So yeah, ah uh, like, what are some of the responsibilities which you have to take? Mm-hmm. Maybe if your parents were with you, they would take that responsibility. But right now, what is the things which you have to take care of? Hey, like uh, while traveling, I have to take care of all my belongings. Like I have to. uh fill up what is required when traveling like there are a uh, breakups like uh, at the middle of the journey uh, there are some uh, overs like stopovers we we have to land we have to wait there and we are like i was like just very fine traveling with the delegation all our friends are so helpful all the senior players and their parents and the coaches are really helpful so i didn't have such a problem and also doing everything on my own like i have to take care of the time like watch the time now i have to uh, uh, get the time right and i have to uh, go out on my own go to the playing venue right so these so, are some of the things okay which okay if there was your parents with you maybe they I have would to choose have my foods on my own that's the yes, main yes. thing <laughs> that's absolutely true yeah you have to choose what to eat what not to eat in general yeah what is what was like a schedule before the round begin let's say okay actually it was double round every day okay uh, other just other than the last day la- uh, last day like yesterday there was only one round uh, so uh, we would wake up at the morning uh, bath have a bath uh, have our breakfast and then only we would go for the first round okay. we would finish the first round uh, and 
uh, come back uh, have a little bit of re rest have a lunch and do some uh, little positions and then go out for the second round and after finishing that it would be some uh, 7 30 or something like that we would reach our hotel because uh, the official playing venue was another hotel so we had okay. to come to this hotel so and uh, then at night we would have dinner together all our friends and uh, then uh, at night uh, i would also do some preparation like uh, just revising my own openings and solving puzzles some simple puzzles so uh would you rely too much on let's say heavy preparation like uh, opening like going to deep into no. opening preparation or something like actually i i don't think it would help because uh, like sleep, i think that i personally think sleep is much more important to keep you refreshed during the next day Absolutely. as there are two rounds it's hectic and uh, i don't think there are too much preparation is needed like i didn't do like that i just revised my own openings and tried that uh, i could not get caught in the openings which i play i am firm in my openings so that my opponent can't catch me and uh, obviously you have to be sharp in tactics so i, I would also solve some simple tactics right to stay so sharp to, like keeping yourself fresh and uh, sort of in the mood of the game basically yeah relaxed I in positive vibes is very important. Absolutely, you have to keep yourself positive, and also it's a long tournament. It's nine rounds. Yeah. And uh, of course, the responsibility on your shoulders is also high. You are representing India. Yeah. In the rapid Asia. and blitz was also there, so many right. days. Yeah. Yes, yes, rapid and blitz was also there. So in total, uh, how how long was it? The whole event. Uh actually, the event started from fourteenth. Okay. And, and uh, so it ends today. Right. Yeah. So quite a long event. And yeah. of course, the quality of your play was also very nice. But first of all... I think so. Yeah. No, no, it was very nice. Uh, all the games, I, I was looking at some of the games. It was very nice and you played quite confidently. But first, let's talk about uh, your team members or let's say the delegation which was with you in yeah. there so like who were the coaches of the indian players uh, the coaches were i am neeraj mishra sir and okay. uh, mr sangeeta madam so okay. they were very helpful all the time mm -hmm. so like what kind of preparation did you do with them like just analysis of games or uh, what okay, uh, we wouldn't do such, such like that they mm -hmm. would just always encourage us to mm -hmm. stay in good mood play good chess like there was not much time they told us to relax right. and play our best the next day okay so yeah that is i think important because you need their encouragement okay preparation can be yeah. done by yourself but you need yeah. if there is someone to encourage you it helps you a lot yeah okay. it feels very happy and confident okay. so uh sir, i wanted to look at two of your games actually mm, yeah i like sure. them very much so let me just share my screen and uh let yeah. me know when you can see it. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Can you see the board in front of you? Yeah. That's great. Okay, so this game uh, was against Asiya Asil Khan. And yeah, this was in from round... Kazakhstan. Yeah, okay. She's from Kazakhstan. And this was in round three, I believe. Right. Yeah. So, uh, what was kind of your preparation going into this game? Did you prepare anything specific for your opponent or just like wanted to play uh, your normal sports? Okay, like uh, before this game, just I had just saw that my opponent actually plays London. She will okay. play London. I was quite confident because in almost every game she had played this opening only. And okay. I had a preparation against London, but uh, I thought that... Uh, uh, taking some uh, other chances would be good too. So I was thinking about just experimenting with the opening a bit. Okay, which didn't turn out so well. Like mm -hmm. uh, I was just thinking about trying something else mm -hmm. and just seeing if it works well or not. Okay. Just for practice of that new opening. It's always good to know new things. Right. Okay, yeah. No, it is always said that you should always try playing different openings just so to yeah. enrich your knowledge of chess, to learn yeah. about different structures. Yes. So, okay, in this game, your opponent started the game with uh, D4, D5. Yeah. And as you said, yeah, they just went into the London. I think yeah. she is also very firm in opening. Maybe she just plays uh, these kind of systems very much. Yeah. 
Correct. So can I type six e three c five? I think this is okay. The actually, most... the thing is, uh, uh, what I played there was e six was bishop d six normal setups, but okay. I was just trying this. Like, uh, I recently saw some games here, like not much, very less, uh, and I liked it quite, uh, quite a bit. So I was just trying. All right, all right. So, uh, like what you played before, as you mentioned, is something like yeah. e six followed by bishop d six. But yeah. now you are trying out the c five approach, right? It's something new. Yeah. Yeah. Actually. Okay, so after c5, what happened is they played c3. c3 is the main move. Yeah, main move, knight c6, c6 knight f3, queen b6. Actually, c3. here, knight bd, uh, I mean, knight d2 is the main move instead of knight f3. Okay, so uh, they just deviated a bit. So that this was the main move, perhaps, after knight c6. Knight yeah, knight. because after here, after uh, queen b6, there is queen c2, and there won't be any kind of bishop f5 there. Because in that position, after queen b2, the rook was there, uh, unsupported. Right. Now the rook can move. Right. Yeah, now the rook can move, absolutely. So, uh, knight c6, knight f3, and uh, now queen, queen b6. b6. Yeah. But, uh, now the knight is not on uh, d2. So, now the rook yeah. cannot move, actually, and okay, yeah. the queen has to come in. She offered a queen trade with uh, queen b3. Queen b3. Yeah. If you immediately exchange the queens with, let's say... Okay, the a file gets open and I think it's slightly better for white. Okay, this position you say is slightly better for white. Right? Ah, yeah. Because the a file is open and uh, this is what actually black also wants. So black provokes with c4 actually. Okay. So c4, okay, you don't want to make the trade. You want them to trade first. That is yeah. the idea. And you want to open the a file for yourself. Yeah. Right. Okay, but uh, she declined, of course, queen c2. Yeah. And, okay, uh, now I think bishop f5 must maybe possible, but I didn't want to calculate that much. Actually, uh, by now, I was out of my uh, opening knowledge. Like, I was into a fully new position I had never faced in my life. Mm -hmm. So, I was just, uh, like, I didn't know if there were uh, any uh, uh, other opening novelties or something like that. So, I was just focusing on developments. Like, I didn't want to go to bishop f5 and something like that right so yeah bishop f5 maybe i didn't know anything yeah it's it the main move here yeah, yeah it, it works it is the main move here but uh the thing is uh it is complicated first of all if you don't know it and there is yeah, no need to go into thing. such complications basically yeah if we insert two, right. you played the g6 okay preparing the idea is obviously bishop f5 yeah mm -hmm. i don't know how much good it, uh, it is but it, it at that moment when i had no knowledge it looked uh, quite logical because I am preparing a natural move and I am also preparing the development of my bishop and uh, right. later I can also uh, push my knight back and play some f6, c5 ideas. Okay, so uh, maybe something like knight h5 at some point? Or oh, knight d7. Yeah, knight d7 is also possible. And then, and then f6, f6 followed by e5. You want to break the Obviously, if I get the chance, I don't think I will be getting that much of time, right. but still. It looks right. pretty good after that. Right. So that is sort of the plan. And okay, if your opponent makes some other move, then accordingly the plan changes. Yeah. Right. Okay. In the game, what happened is after g6, uh, knight bd2 came. Yeah. Then now you play bishop f5. Yeah. So this, I think, this move c4, this sort of creates a clamp on this square. Otherwise, in other situations, yeah. this move might have been possible, but now it is not. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the advantages. Like, uh, I get more space. But uh, mm. again, one of the uh, negative points is that after, if uh, White somehow manages to get the e4 break in, the c4 pawn will be hanging there. So the center will be busted for black. So it will be a, dif a bit difficult. But that's why bishop f5 and knight f6 all are there to prevent White from getting c4 in. Right. Yeah, so basically, if White ever gets in this break, actually. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite tough, and you want to prevent that by all means. Yeah, correct. Okay, so queen c1. Okay, already in the opening, she is moving her queen quite sometimes. What did you think was the yeah. idea of this? Okay, not some idea, they are just protecting b2. Okay, only one square was available to right. protect oh, b2. Yeah, so yeah, there was uh, not much choice actually. That's true. Yeah, I have no choice, right. So knight h5 and now you want to go for this bishop? Actually, yeah, I didn't know much, but I just thought that uh, if I can somehow capture the bishop, like 
Uh, there are two possibilities for white. One is mm -hmm. to keep the bishop on f4 and they can recapture with uh, e f4. But then uh, one of the positive points for black is that uh, white doesn't have the chance of e4 break. And right. whereas black still has the chances of some kind of f6, e5 later. Right. So, okay, I'm just making a random move for white here. Let's say white played this. And yeah, then knight f4. And, and something like just bishop g7 and just develop. Right. Maybe. And, and then uh, maybe I can just simply simply play castle f6 e5 rook e8 right. and h5 if needed. Yeah. So something like this and f6 followed by e5. But okay, the e5 break uh, I think gets uh, a bit harder to achieve, which it was not. Before. Yeah. But yeah. okay, the there is still some chance for black, whereas uh, the chance is completely gone for white to play e4. Right. Correct. So in the game, knight h5 and uh, bishop g3. Uh, yeah. I guess if you took, then they will just play g3. Yeah, and uh, okay, they want to open the h file or yeah, they want they just bring a pawn towards the center, so right. it's not that bad. Yeah, it's uh, quite nice actually, and okay, you just continued your normal development. Yeah, because anyways, I can take it any time, mm -hmm. and it's the right time. Right. Uh, unless, okay, if she plays... Okay, she H3. will not play h3 because then the structure gets destroyed. Absolutely. That is the problem because if white yeah. plays h3, then knight into g3, f into g3, and okay, this pawn is also becoming... Yeah, uh, this pawn is weak whole structure is destroyed. Absolutely. So, you can take that anytime. You just develop with bishop g7, uh, knight h4. Yes. And now you Okay, she also it. wants... Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because knight into f5 is not possible now because of knight into f5. So, mm -hmm. she has to take back. Right. So, bd7. You save your mm -hmm. bishop. e4. Okay, now white has Okay, she got e4. Yeah, she got e4. In. Okay, but uh, like uh, with less mobility uh, 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 comparing to that position, uh, I have some ways to save now. I, I thought that uh, by if I just play e6, like I had played e6 here. Mm -hmm. uh, taking is not so good for white actually I think because white doesn't have much chances after that okay. like this uh, seems pretty back. well for black black can castle just castle short and mm -hmm. go bring the rooks play f5 and mm -hmm. also go for the queen side mm -hmm. okay uh, the advantage is black uh, black is having more space so the mm -hmm. uh, he can make more flexibility of his pieces and transfer his pieces more easily from this side to that and okay, in the queen side, as you mentioned, you have quite a lot of space. And also, I think this bishop... This bishop is, is a bit restricted. Right. Yeah. And uh, it needs to be figured out that where exactly this bishop will be developed. On which square or which yeah. diagonal. Yeah. So, uh, definitely not a good idea if she just takes. So, after e4, e6, she played bishop e. She wants yeah, to develop quite natural. Bishop and, quite natural. Yeah. And also, I guess she wants to castle. Yeah. Right, so castles, castles, both sides castles, and uh, yeah. I guess we are sort of out of the opening phase of the game now, and now entering the middle game. Yeah, middle game. Right. Okay. So, queen c7. Okay, this was a completely new structure for me. Like, the main plan was that, uh, like, uh, I was trying to do something on the queen side with b5 and sort of something, like, okay. I was also hoping to break in the center. Okay. Oh, it didn't work out so well. Like she had got e5. He played e5. Right, and in this position, she played the move e5. And okay, now the thing is that queen is no more on b6. If the queen was on b6 mm -hmm. after f6, uh, he would, uh, uh, she would have been forced to take back because f4, I would just uh, have taken on e5, and because of the pin, I just win a pawn. Right. So, uh, what you're mentioning is okay. Let's say this position is there. And uh, let's say you make some random move, like uh, I don't know, yeah, e6, a6, e5, e5. Uh, and now, now I get f6. f6, then f4 is... isn't possible, yeah, f4 is not possible because of... because I just take it, right? And uh, okay, this pin is active there, but hmm. the problem is when you have already played queen c7, now f6, is, like now no f6, pin is there. No pin is no no pin is there. So after hmm. f six, it is actually a pleasant choice for black if they want to take or not. It depends. Yeah. 
Why it has to play F four? I think. Yeah, F four is there. Uh, the game continues. I guess White is sort of getting an advantage in the sense of space. Is it yeah. Clear? Yeah. Right. Actually, I had no, not known this setup. So, uh, actually, here yeah, it is quite pleasant for White. Like, it's pleasant for White, comfortable. Correct. White is okay here. I agree. So, okay, E5. And uh, now you played G5. Okay, so you want to kick that knight out. Uh, yeah, uh, because I don't want to allow f4. That right. structure seems very pleasant for white. So I just want the knight to go to f3. It's forced to go to f3. And right. then I want to play f6. Like, actually, uh, it was a very, very difficult uh, uh, to be sure what to do. Because after f6, uh, white takes and black takes back. There are some weaknesses on your king side. Like, it's very obvious that the g5 is weak. e6 right. has been a weakness. Mm -hmm. E5 is an outpost square. If white manages to get something there, uh, uh, it will be very good. Right. E5 square. Mm -hmm. And uh, black has some weaknesses so in the point. king side. So it's a little bit uh, scary. But okay, I thought that this was, uh, at least I had some chances. Mm -hmm. uh, unlike that position with F4 where uh, like it was very difficult to get some, some sort of play. Got it. So in this position, even though there are some obvious weaknesses in black scam, you thought that, okay, mm. maybe uh, this is better than the position which you would have got after F4. Yeah. And I guess uh, Black has also something to say for themselves, right? So what is yeah. Black's plan here? What would Black like to do? Okay, one of Black's plan is that uh, Black is having more space uh, still now, obviously. Right. And Black has chances everywhere, like White has doubled upon. So uh, Black actually uh, is advanced more in the Queen side. So he can, uh, she can, I mean, black can plan uh, to advance on the queen side, something like b5, b4. And also in the center, like uh, if sometime uh, it's possible, there is also a chance of e5 in favorable right. circumstances. Like mm -hmm. uh, we have to see that d5 doesn't get so weak. Right. And, and also in the king side in the future, if we can pile up the rooks on the g file or on the h file, get mm -hmm. the queen. And then we can push h5 and h4 and all and get right. the king out of the way to e7 or d6, somewhere like that. Right. Okay. There so is so uh, the chances just, everywhere. Uh, so, takes a walk, yeah, right. runs away. Right. Okay. So, in the king side, just to summarize a bit, in the king side, uh, black has potential to attack if they can bring the rooks on the g file or h5. In yeah. the center, there is the possibility of a well timed uh, e5 break, which is okay, not yeah, not now, maybe, but at some point, yeah, sometime and later, the, yeah. And in the queen side, it makes sense to play because in the queen side, the uh, black is the one who has more space, so these are sort yeah. of the plans for black, okay. Okay, so, yeah, it, uh, it is not so easy, like, uh, as the plans, uh, like white also has some plans, so it's absolutely. not so easy, but no, no. Uh, still, black has something, correct. So in the game, rook e1 was played, uh, rook yeah. a e8, and now knight f1. So knight f1, I guess, coming to... Yeah, her plan is quite obvious. She wants to come to e5. Okay. Right. e3, g4, e5. Yeah, e3 and g4. And uh, right now, she also attacks g5. Right, that's also a point. So And the problem uh, is, if I play h6, uh, the king side gets more weakened. Mm -hmm. so, and okay. like, it's a bit problematic to... Like, mobilize my pieces and adjust them to the right squares now. Got it. Okay, it's six, uh, already in a weak king side. Okay. Now yeah, the... light square weakness. Yeah. Uh, this diagonal is quite weak right now. Yeah, one of white's plans may be just to uh, uh, set up a battery, something like that. Right. If white gets a chance, like, uh, he can just control the light square. It's very weak. Like, it can get opened anytime. Also, knight e3, g4 is there. Right. So that's difficult. also a possibility. Yeah. Knight uh, e3, g4, and uh, it seems that uh, black's position is not so good here. So, in the game, yeah. what you did is you after knight f4, I played queen d8. Queen d8. This is far better. Actually, the thing is, uh, the, I thought that the queen was not doing much on c7, first of all, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, uh, there were actually only two ways to save it. H6 is weakening the position, but whereas queen d8, we are like mobilized. Like h6, a pawn push, we cannot take it back, but queen, we can adjust anything. Correct. Absolutely. 
So night E three, and I guess the plan which you mentioned is coming into action for this plan. Yeah. Of coming to G four. Now you play rookie seven. Rookie seven. Yeah. Or you just want to defend the seventh rank. Again. Yeah, I just want to defend the seventh rank, and actually, uh, like I have to do something. Like I don't have such obvious plans now because uh, though it seems that I have more space. Like it is like all controlled firmly by white, so I just want to get the pieces to the good squares, Correct. and then act for some. Yeah. So for now, okay, you have to coordinate your pieces sort of, and yeah. maybe maybe there is sort of an attack coming in the king side. You have to defend against. Okay, that. maybe yeah. Yeah, and uh, okay after that, once that is done, now you start your play sort of. So knight g four is. Yeah. Done. And now you play just rook g seven. We need yeah. king h eight. So you just want to make your king safe. Actually, I just want to wait. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's also making my king safe. Ah, uh, ah, mm -hmm. uh, away from any knight at six uh, on uh, any kind of checks there. And also, right. I'm just waiting to see mm -hmm. what my opponent does. Got it. So, ah, uh, if they make sort of a structural concession, or maybe they yeah. put the piece in a less ideal square. Then you can start. Yeah, I want game. that only. So right. I want uh, my opponent to make some weaknesses. Correct. So bishop d one, and now I guess the bishop is coming to okay. C two. Yes. Yeah. This diagonal. Yeah. Is there. And in this diagonal, the bishop might be a bit more effective. Yeah, this was a nice plan. Like in this diagonal, obviously, it's much more effective. Correct. So ninety seven, and your knight is coming. F four probably to G six or to F five. Like I was just adjusting my pieces. Like I don't know what to do, so I'm just Correct. playing on. So for now you are waiting. So knight yeah. F five. Now knight F five. Queen D two. Bishop E eight. And bishop actually, two. I also want to get my bishop to uh, either H five or G six, but mm -hmm. it's not possible right now. But still, mm -hmm. it's not doing anything on D seven. Correct. So yeah, in d seven, the only thing which it was doing is defending this pawn sort of. Yeah, but uh, there is already an outpost on e five in which uh, the knight uh, is already there, so no need to defend that for now. Correct. So knight d six. Yeah. Six. And now you bring your bishop to h five. Okay. Now the bishop also is an active square. So the pieces, yeah. the black pieces, they're slowly moving into the optimum squares which they want to be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, knight f six, queen f six, and g four. Okay, finally, uh, she weakened something. Right. So she had to make a pawn move of some sort, I guess. And, yeah, uh, like it may not be so bad, but uh, uh it gave me something like uh, she moved the pawn, she attacked my bishop, like she is getting my bishop out of the uh like. Square where it was doing something, but she is also giving up f four. So right. I can maybe uh, bring the queen, or even if possible, the knight or something like that. F four. Yes, absolutely. So let's say in this square, if the knight comes somehow, then uh, yeah. okay, actually it can be very nice, and it will yeah. be strong. Yeah. I don't think it right. can come, but still, like uh, it's making uh, creating an obvious outpost for black. Feed the queen or the knight. Correct. So, okay. Now you just bring your back. Uh, bishop back to e eight, knight f three. Yeah. Yeah, and now I think she was not being able pressure. to find such good plans. Okay, maybe she was also a bit confused as to what. Uh, yeah, to this do is or very natural. Do. Like uh, it also happens to me many times. Like uh, I get the initiative in the middle game or something like that. Like uh, mm -hmm. I have advantages, but uh, I don't know how to convert them. Like how to manage it, manage the position, keep the. Tension going on, so it's Correct. very obvious. So that's why I was just not losing hope, just fighting on. It's the main thing to fight on, never lose hope. And uh, uh, she is also a player. Uh, she can also the same mistakes as I do. So. Right. So okay, now Bishop G six. Now that the knight has moved back, you just uh, you just offering. Being the bishop. Right. Yeah. And I guess the trade sort of favors you. I guess. Yeah, because I'm driving the bishop of the in, important diagonal. Whereas right. uh, if you see my bishop was on d7, mm -hmm. doing actually nothing other than protecting the e6 pawn. Now it has been exchanged with a, a good potential bishop. Correct. 
and okay also your bishop was sort of the bad bishop as to say because yeah. it was a light squared bishop and all the pawns in the center are in light squares but yeah. okay now that bishop is gone and now you have to reroute your knight maybe to a more active square yeah yeah e4 is an obvious outpost i'm trying to get it there e4 is there and okay in the game you first uh, they played queen she e5. played queen e5 i think this was a mistake like more than uh, how uh, it was the position i think this was a psychological mistake a little bit like what i think because uh, till now she was having uh, the initiative she was giving the press uh, pressure like uh, more likely she was pressing the game but now she suddenly like it's a kind of like she is uh, satisfied with a draw or something like that she is right. making such an approach like uh, it's a little bit comforting for black right it i is, was actually and... quite comfortable yeah. after this Right, uh, were you like kind of shocked or surprised when this move came? I'm not shocked. Like I was also thinking of this, maybe like this. Uh, but I knew that this was not so good. So I'm like, oh, okay, just normal. I was happy because of it. So they, I just knew that my opponent wasn't finding a plan. My opponent has understood that she has lost the initiative, most of the initiative, mm -hmm. and now she is like satisfied with the draw. Actually, mm -hmm. I was the higher, so. It makes sense, uh, but doesn't make so much. Like I am uh, comfortable. Like I have got at least equal. Correct. Or I more than got at least equality, and also I think it's uh, as you mentioned, it's psychologically difficult to accept that okay you had an advantage, but now yeah. you lost it. That's what and... exactly happens to me also. Like it feels okay. like really, really bad. Like uh, when it happens like this, you feel like okay. And you also spend much time on thinking how to uh, maintain the initiative, and then after so much of effort, you see that like she was maintaining it for many moves, but suddenly uh, now she is uh, her moves look like she is uh, just going for a draw. Correct. She as uh, she so, is satisfied with it. So uh, it this is uh, like something you have to change your mind accordingly when you have understood yeah. the position. Okay, it no longer holds the advantage for you. Instead yeah. of going maybe for what she did in this position, maybe it was possible yeah. to let's say find some other plans and yeah okay. But uh, after queen e five, just knight e four again. You don't want to trade yourself. You want them to trade. Yeah, because I'll get uh the rook doubled and the knight can't move. Also, after like a potential queen exchange, she can't capture with the rook. So the like e six is a weakness. Uh, yeah. White's main target is actually e six, but uh, she can't actually attack it. Correct. Agreed. So okay, rook e two, uh, king g eight. Uh, now you now like she has to take a decision if she wants to trade the queen. Yeah, or... I was just forcing like it's good to force your opponent to take decisions. Like this also takes mm -hmm. a time and uh, it also burns her energy. Like she has to take. I don't have to take the decisions. Right. And actually, I was also going to see like if she was uh, if she would just trade queens or something like that. Correct. Right. Uh, it would okay. be a relief, kind of. True. Uh, so in this position, is like, is it possible for uh, let's say white to not trade queens and just keep it there? Is it a possibility? It's possible, but uh, I think it's not so good because white has already become quite passive, mm -hmm. and I think because uh, it's uh, of the backward pawn on f two actually, which can't be moved to f four, and uh, because of the more space I have. On the queen side, and also this so the less here, mobility, yeah, and right. this knight is helpless kind of. Right, so it is not doing too much, and it actually it is blocking and the move. movement of this pawn, right? Yeah. So, uh, in this position, she just traded the queens, queen s six. Yeah. And uh, so okay, yeah, actually, this position, uh, this endgame is slightly better for Blair, okay. obviously. So yep, and even though you have a backward spawn here, which is okay, not she can't really pawn. attack it in that way. Right. So at yeah, least right I, now, I'm reminded actually by looking at this pawn, I'm reminded by one of the famous chess scenes, which is, it is only a weakness if your opponent can attack it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So okay, in this position, even though it might be a weakness, it is technically it is not a weakness because how would they sort of? Yeah, it's uh, really difficult. I I couldn't find a way to right. attack it properly. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, rook f one. Uh, just 
adding some protection. actually this position like uh, may not be uh, like uh, may not be that much better but it's very comforting for me like i at least got something and now she is the one defending so right. i'm just really i can just continue from here and see what happens i will just uh, try my best give the best moves right so even though maybe the computer engines might give this let's say a uh, sort of engine equality so to say it is more yeah. comforting or more easy to play with the black pieces okay yeah right so uh, and also as you as you mentioned already it is again a big shift in her play she has to change her mentality to sort yeah. of going into defense mode now and like uh, playing the end game perfectly yeah correct so rook f4 you attack the spawn which is okay yeah. the knight e5 is, is not really possible because of knight g3 okay knight e5 there is this nice move knight g3 you can't yeah. really take because here this rook is hanging yeah so she had to go knight h2 again which looks like a very passive square for sad this. move yeah sad move as to say uh rook 4 i just f4. came back because uh, i i didn't understand what to do then i was just thinking of some other plan because it's not doing much there and i need the rook to protect e6 so that uh, Like after f three, my knight is mobilized, and I now realize that I have to do something on the queen side. Right. So you are you are sort of switching attention. You know there is a weakness there, which you might attack at some. But okay, point. it's there. Like I can attack it later. Right, and you can always attack it later. Okay, at the moment f three is not possible because of moves like these. Knight g three. Right, but uh, at the future it might be possible, and instead now you focus your attention on the queen side. Okay. Right. Yeah, and this was another thing. Like she, yeah. uh, if she is trying for a draw right here, mm -hmm. uh, with knight f three. Mm -hmm. Okay, if she did play knight f three, uh, what would you play? Actually, uh, it's quite difficult to say, but uh, I think I would have played something like d five. Right. Okay, or or what you might have done is sort of test her once again. Uh, here. Uh, okay. Yeah, and then decide after if I have anything better. Right, and okay, if she played here, then we go B five. Sorry, B five. Yeah, this is also pretty nice because uh the e six pawn is blocking the rook's movement to the queen side, so I'm just getting it by a tempo and coming. Correct. So okay, in the game, she did not actually go for this. Uh, she played yeah. more G three. Yeah, did, actually, I think she was quite frustrated here. Mm -hmm. G three actually creates another weakness, right? Uh, now this yeah, the F three square and mm -hmm. the F two also because uh, mm -hmm. um, if he moves F three, it's not quite that much protected, and she can't maybe play F four. Mm -hmm. So yeah, maybe at the future, if she could have played F three, it would have been nice. But G three, now okay, not this. Ninety uh, five. B five. Okay, not this variation. Okay, after knight h two, she played the move. Uh, Rook f six g three. Yeah, g three. Now the thing is, if she plays f three at some point, now g three is going to be weak. That's the main thing. Yeah, and also it restricts the knight. Like it can't mm -hmm. come to f three anymore. Correct. I agree. It has no squares. Very yeah, sad knight, knight compared yeah, to my knight. Yeah, but this knight is very powerful, while this knight is very weak. The only yeah. thing which She can possibly do. I guess is sort of move the rook back once again. Then okay, she what she tried is uh, logically she just played something like king g two f three. Uh, I think that's the most logical to drive my knight away. Yeah. Because king she g2 really g2 can't g2 move g2. the rook here because of f two is still hanging. Right. So okay, adding some more protection and then after she yeah. skip to knight out, then she develops. Then she can rook. move the rook. Right. Okay, b five. As you mentioned, you want to now play on the queen side, king g. Yeah, and I, I need to okay. act fast before she gets time to consolidate. Right. So, like till the time she is uh, sort of regrouping her pieces, you want to gain some initiative on the queen side. Yeah. Correct. Okay, f three, knight d six, rook f e one, king f seven. So making the king active and also you are defending. This Protecting side. the pawn. Protecting the pawn. 
okay f4 is not really possible yet f4 like actually f4 uh, i would take f4 and the problem after f4 is it's just leaving the e4 square for my knight i could have just took no not here like uh, rook f4 mm -hmm. if she plays rook e6 then maybe uh knight knight e4 mm -hmm. and then rook f2 is a threat and the rook is also hanging right and okay you are sort of uh, interfering between these two rooks with this move the knight, yeah. this move knight e4 and yeah. uh yeah with this coming in this is definitely not yeah, a good she will lose all the points this pawns will be lost after this check at the least yeah right okay so she played a3 she uh okay it is taking another move but her like her regrouping of the pieces is not complete and she is playing a3 to stop yeah. the advances on the queen side i believe yeah now rook d8 now you switch the rook over. Yeah, the idea is obvious i just want to push absolutely rook a1 knight c Okay, knight c8. Uh, where is the knight? Actually, going? I want to prevent. Uh, like it's not like that, but I just want to prevent the rook from coming to f7 after all the trades. Okay, so uh, you want to prevent the rook from coming to a7, right? So okay. yeah, actually, if I would Let's have check. played b4 instead of it, then uh, after the takes takes, the rook could come to a7. I don't okay. think I don't think it was so good for white as well, but still, uh, white would have got some counterplay. I don't want to allow it. Right, you don't want to allow these sort of counterplay, and let's say if you decide to trade the rooks here. No, this is not possible because uh, okay. the b4 is going. Yeah, b4 is landing. So okay, uh, you don't want to allow any such unnecessary counterplay. Yeah. So you just went knight c8. Knight c8. And also the knight c8. was not doing much on d6 currently. Mm -hmm. uh, e4 is blocked. Correct. Uh, okay, if the if this pawn was an f4, then okay, this knight was good. But okay, here yeah. it is doing actually a nice purpose. So this is a nice prophylactic move actually. You want to prevent the rook from coming to a7. Yes. Right. So okay, in this position, uh, it came rook e e1 white two b4 a b a b rook e b1 and just king g7. Yeah, rook f7, rook b7 is my plan. Yes. Okay, that's uh, now you want to reinforce basically. From... Yeah, because she has uh, not so many op options actually. Mm -hmm. Her options yeah. are limited because she can't move any of the rooks. Because if she moves the rook on a1, I can just take on uh, c3 and she's just losing on the spot. And she can't uh, maybe also move the rook on b1 because I will just get in with my rook on b2 and then I'll double and then it's quite easy for black, I think. Also, not to mention, but this knight is still not That's doing anything. really sad. Right. Yeah. And uh, basically, it seems like you're playing with three pieces and they're playing with two pieces. They're down a piece, yes. something like that. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, knight of one. Finally, the knight ah. is going to do something. Yeah, the knight has to come there to support the rook on b1. Otherwise, I would just go b7 and capture the rook on b1. Uh, like, capture the pawn on c3. And b1 right. is hanging. So, so finally, the knight will be doing something, but still, it's really passive. Yep. It is still not doing uh, too much, so to say. King f Yeah. And now you sort of start activating your king because all. Yeah, here pieces... I need to find a plan because mm -hmm. I have got my pieces positioned in almost the right place. Only the king I, it needs to be more positioned. Actually, I was thinking of a break like e5. Uh, e5 captures, captures. And uh, then uh, I could just play D. Yeah. Uh, after King F6. Uh, King play... G2, suppose. Okay, let's say they play King G2. Okay, F4 was to prevent this, right? Yeah. Right, okay. E5. I would have just on something okay. like this, maybe. Maybe not now uh, on, on some right one, but still, I think now it's also working. Right. Because okay. D4 is my obvious threat. Mm -hmm. D4. Maybe and... after bringing the King to C5. Right. Like so I have to play slowly. Do not hurry. Principle works here, maybe. Absolutely. So the cat and mouse principle, as Silman says, you have to yeah. like, let your opponent suffer. Uh, let yeah. them figure out uh, what exactly to do. And okay, you will slowly yes. move in here. Then yeah. maybe push d5. Sorry, d4. And okay. Also, Back. maybe I can just take on c3, exchange all the rooks, and get my king into b3. All the or the knight to a4, and I am just winning the pawn. 
yeah that is also i think a very nice idea so after you bring it and maybe takes i capture everything yeah uh, and the night end game is winning because of your much active thing yeah right okay so in the game she did not allow that of course she played a yeah didn't point to allow any such breaks Nine yeah. yeah now f4 has a, a drawback that is leaving the e4 square obviously right. so a pawn move always leaves some square so right. so this is uh, the dilemma with pawn moves you never know like whichever pawn you move for let's say some sort of tactical purpose or a dynamic activity it is always leaving some or some or the other square behind which might yeah like come back turn and out to be later. a real liability right yeah here uh, I was not able to find the plan, but uh, here suddenly it uh, struck me that uh, if I manage to get my knight on e4, mm -hmm. after all the exchanges, like her knight it will be doomed to b1, like it can't move. Correct. So that is what happened actually here. I think this is a simple win after yeah. just all the trades. Yeah, so maybe king e3 wasn't the best move. Already, I okay, she has this. to play. She yeah. doesn't have moves. Right, she doesn't have too many moves actually. Too many and options. But king e3 now, uh, the idea which you mentioned happened. So bc3, bc3 and all the rooks are killed. Now the thing is, as you mentioned, this knight The knight is stormed, I can't move and my knight is like too much uh, for that. Yeah. And also this pawn is attacked right now. So you have to defend. Yeah, that's the main thing. That mm -hmm. pawn is attacked. Difficult to protect everything. So, so yeah, here. Yeah. Simple. Yeah, there, here, and uh, yeah, h6 is pretty simple because she doesn't have any chances on the king side now. Mm -hmm. And what will white play? White has to go king g2 on the move. She did play king g2, and it's sort of like rook zwang actually. Uh, yeah. There are not too many pieces which she can move. Actually, only the king can move in this position. Nothing else can move right now. And only yeah, the and only to that to, to king g2. Right. Here actually I had many plans. Like one of the plans was uh, which, uh, which I was uh, thinking first was just to bring my king to a4 and then to b3. Mm -hmm. But so, I was actually a bit reluctant to that because I wasn't sure. Like after f5 or something like that, what would I do? So it was not possible to go such further because I have to take. And when white takes back, actually I can't uh, take on c3. Because actually the f1 is a passer. If right. I go to a4 or something like that. I need right. to be with the king here only. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep your king sort of around. Because yeah. okay, at the appropriate moment of f5 comes. And your king is let's say on vacation somewhere here. Or <laughs> uh, here. Okay then this this is becoming a problem. This will be a, a problem. A, yeah, this is a serious threat. And uh, okay you didn't allow any of that actually after they played king f3 king b6 and they were sort of around here f5 yeah here actually i was provoking f5 here mm -hmm. i thought of many plans like mm -hmm. uh now uh, actually white has no moves at all one plan is that i just play king e7 and force uh, white to take on e6 and when i take off the king e6 white has no chances at all and mm -hmm. then now i can go uh, with my king to a4 and to b3 and right. I don't know what white will do. One was so, that, and mm -hmm. uh, on. other one which I felt tempting at the last moment, actually, which I was, which I played was mm -hmm. e five. Just okay. I would push the pawns, and at last the c pawn would be the passer. Uh, right. Okay. So your because the king can't come there. this side. That's yeah. the main thing. Yeah. And the king is okay. Not. Not. Uh, it's not possible for the king to come here actually. Not because... to mention that in this position, it's already time pressure for me. So I also have to act very fast. Right. So, okay. Uh, what was the time control of the event? Uh, this one? Okay. It was uh, standard 90, 30, 90 plus 30. 90 30. And after 40 moves, did you get extra time? Or just no. for the whole game? Normal. Okay. Yeah. For the whole game. So, okay. Then yeah. uh, I guess at this point already, maybe you have minutes or like a few minutes only. Yeah. One minute and second. Okay, so like going up and second, down. Okay, so that's uh, quite a bit stressful actually. Yeah. So, uh, okay, two plans you mentioned. I actually, okay, this plan, it works also. But this plan also like very much actually what you mentioned. 
just to force yeah this it. plan is like yeah just to force get rid of that uh, annoying Maybe thing and then go okay and now then i go march. there right. yeah so just uh, march on here and this king is this is like simple. a peaceful way to mm -hmm. do it right but i actually like it's uh, like uh, when time pressure comes it's a different kind of scenario like uh, in the tournament level, like, it feels something different. You feel so much tempting. You feel if you can't make it in time, also you feel uh, suspicion on your uh, suspicious on yourself. Like if you are doing the right calculation, if there is something for your opponent, that's right. why you should. I think you should just trust yourself. Like what I am doing is right. I am the best. Like that. Uh, like I think doing it no, helps absolutely. a little bit because you don't uh, have to recheck the variation a thousand times. Like sometimes it's good, but most of the cases what happens is uh, like we just burn our time like this. Actually what happens to me and we don't need to do that so many times. Right. We so have, to, have to, to have trust on us. Yep. We have to uh, trust our intuition actually. during. The yeah. Time. And actually yeah. this is uh, one of the marks I think or maybe one of the key qualities of players who are very good in rapid and blitz. They know how to trust yeah. their calculations. They yeah. like in rapid and blitz, there is no time happens. to recheck at all. Absolutely. So you have to go with your gut feeling what you feel about the position. And yep. uh, yeah. then you go on. Then you yeah. go on and make the move. And okay, if you trust your intuition, as it happens, even the world champion Magnus Carlsen says the same thing. I always like yeah. to my intuition. Right. So, okay, F5. And uh, you also relied on your intuition. You knew that, okay, if I have this will work. King J. Yeah, this should work. Cd, cd, c3. Knight a3, king c. Yeah, quite natural. Here, actually, I was a bit nervous, but I hold held on to my nerves. Like being nervous will not help at all. It will right. like be the opposite exactly. So I just want to get my king to a4 mm -hmm. by b6, a5 or b4 also. But right. one of my problem is if White manages to reach the c3 pawn. Like somehow get uh, catch the c3 pawn either with the knight or the king. Mm -hmm. uh, white can just push with f6 and then can take the pawn on c3. So I have right. to be the... careful about that also. Right. So then, okay, you have to take back with the knight and then you lose this pawn. And okay, that end game is probably, okay, again, fine for white, which is not something you want, of course. So king yeah. this is a crucial calculation which you have to make. That uh, yeah. who is the first one to reach the pawn? King b6, yeah. king a3, king f5, king d3, king b6. And you are right on time, actually. Yeah, actually, I'm right on time. Actually, so if it was like, if you had missed one tempo, then it is quite difficult. And here, one thing is there. After knight b1, mm -hmm. I think black only has one more. Uh, okay. The viewers of this video can, I guess, pause the video right at this moment and uh, it's quite easy, find... like it's quite obvious, but it, there's only one more, right? So, no, I guess it is quite tempting for many, uh, like many times to make some other move, but okay, this move is yeah. particularly important. It's not a yeah. and yeah. I guess the main point is you want to drive the king away from that square, yeah. Right. I want to drive the king away and put my king on the right square. So and okay. also, the main thing of this is white just loses the g4 pawn, which is okay. why this move is played. It uh, might seem not so obvious that why would black suddenly go for g4, mm -hmm. but it's important here because I can't stop uh, losing the c3 pawn, but mm -hmm. I need to get some pawns in return, and I am just in time to play king c4. Correct. So, okay, maybe if even if this pawn is lost in return, what we're getting is this pawn and and yeah. uh, your knight is controlling here and also now you're creating a pass pawn king. That's the thing. Yeah. Right. So okay, king c2, knight g4. And now I just simply take and knight c3, there is king c4. King. And this is the point. Right. If and knight e2, uh, I have knight e3, knight f5. Knight e3. Knight uh, this, this is clearly winning. This is completely hopeless for white because she yeah. played king d2. No, king into d4. Yeah, same thing. Knight a2 check. King a5. Knight c3. Knight f6. You just bring your knight back. If you first of all defend this pawn, preparing to... And king. white can't stop losing. Yep. King a2. King f5. So two pawns up. King d3. Yeah, f3. this is clear. 
this was a very okay, nice finish knight c1 and knight c5 with Shane uh, and yeah, yeah i want to bring the king many things at the h4 also i can say i can also go with king d5 king c4 correct that is also possible or yeah. even g4 drive the king and then go to e4 many no, plans so uh, many winning moves and in this position the yeah. opponent resigned the game okay this yeah. was a fantastic game actually uh this is not something which I am usually used to see in, let's say, games of junior players. Usually, it is more so tactics and all. But look at this game. This is very positional in nature, actually. Thank you. you know, this game I liked actually very much. And uh, sort of all Thank the you maneuvers so much. and the ideas which you found throughout the game. This was simply spectacular. So, we had actually picked another game as well. This was yeah. a uh, round 6 game, I think. Round 6 yeah. game against uh, Gurwan Batar Urangi. And, uh, yeah, from, from Mongolia. Country. Okay, she was from Mongolia. And okay, this guy, this game you showed some of the tactics, so to say. This is, let's say, a far more exciting game. Yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, we are not uh, tactics. Both are there in this game because... Uh, like it's there how to squeeze your opponent don't give any counter play and, and then at last use some tactics like pretty tactics to finish it's very aesthetically pleasing and right so uh, like sort of first you are using your positional skills to get a comfortable position once you get it then you're using tactics to finish the game that's the idea yeah. right okay so in this game you have the white pieces and you start with d4 Okay. I didn't know much about her opening. Like uh, mm -hmm. I just knew she would play the King's Indian. Okay. She played G6. Okay, so yeah, in these two games, again, your predictions about the opponent playing something exactly matched. You were not surprised. That is a good thing. Yeah, actually. I didn't prepare much. I, I went for my usual choice here. Right, so okay, G3. Oh, you want to play the CMC to system against uh, this? Uh, yeah, right. this is my usual choice. Right. So I actually, went for it. The biggest uh, exponent of this system is actually Grandmaster Vidit Gujarati, who is actually yeah. a very big expert in these setups. Yes. Right. So BG7, Bishop G2, castles, Knight C3, D6, Knight F3. So in King's Indian positions, usually how it rolls here, okay, Knight C6, uh, castles. Yeah, I just knew she would play Knight C6 and Bishop G4. Till this, I knew she would play. Right. Usually in King's Indian positions, uh, the engines sort of like white very much. One of the reasons I believe is due to the huge face advantage with white bits. Yeah, but advantage in centers. But practically, yeah. it's a bit difficult. Like what happens in Grunfeld also. Like it seems right. like white has such a big center. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, white has an advantage in space and all. But it's actually practically, uh, it's a little bit difficult that as blacks may uh, like create that position only to attack white center. Correct. So, yeah, uh, when you have a center, as the great uh, German master Siegbert Tarash said, when you have a center, you have something to worry about. You have to save your center <laughs> from getting yeah. undermined. So, yeah. uh, that is one thing. And, okay, uh, white gets the usual things uh, like the center control here. Okay. Actually, here the main move is uh, knight a5 instead of bishop f3. Okay, knight a5 and yeah of, and b3. b3 and here the thing is any 4 is not possible because mm -hmm. uh, if any 4 knight into e4 bishop a1 and bishop d2 and black loses a piece okay, bishop d2 and uh, the a5 is this... hanging and the a1 is hanging oh, right right so this knight here is hanging okay the loose pieces drop off this is a loose piece and this will drop off so, yeah, so and, knight d4 uh, is not possible. Black plays c5 usually. Mm -hmm. c5 and, and then the game continues. dc6, knight c6. And okay. it's a normal game. Something like this continues. Bishop b2 or something like that. Right. I'm not yeah. pretty sure here because I didn't study that much. Actually, I couldn't remember that much. Right. So, okay. Uh, this position, oh, yes. Another position which she could have got. But yeah. In the game, she just played bishop into f and uh, here yeah. your decision actually surprised me a bit. You played EF3. So is this yeah. uh, theory actually EF3? Uh, I think it's theory. Like uh, even if it's not theory, it's quite logical. 
because the night one of the nights outpost is e5 and you just want to drive it away from there by playing f4 right. and also uh, one of the other things is that bishop f3 is not it doesn't seem quite good here because after knight e5 the bishop is attacked like uh, uh, knight e5 i have to save the c4 and the bishop is going like where to save okay, you have to maybe just uh, okay you can yeah then the c4 it. is hanging then c4 is hanging so that is why yeah that's three. the problem Quite and in this choice. kind of structures, uh, like uh, generally what I knew, like I didn't knew uh, move by move theory, but what I knew is like uh, generally white takes A into F3. Right. And so okay, I went the, for it. Yeah. And the more important point is you are like forever stopping Just this. testing the knights. Yeah. yeah. Uh, E4 squad is not available anymore. Right. So a very logical choice, I agree. And also the E7 is a backward pawn. I can mm -hmm. file it. Right. Okay, now the e file is open. Okay, that's a nice idea. This is a backward spawn. You want to attack it at some point. Yeah. Right. Okay. Knight e5 in the game. You need to... I think knight e5 is not so good. She would have to go. Like, I, I am actually, I felt that I have already have a very comfortable position of the knight e5 because, like, it's not doing much there. She had to go knight b8, maybe. She'll okay, just, uh, like, white will just get a tempo. Knight B8. Knight B8 and, uh, and knight D7 or maybe knight A6, knight C5. Yeah, that is also another possibility of rerouting the knight. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So knight E5, then we need to. Heck, I, I, from here after knight E5, like I didn't know anything. It was just I, I had to play over the board from here. Queen E2 seemed pretty logical to me. Like mm -hmm. I'm just developing the queen and it's not a bad square. And my future idea is F4. Right. Your future idea is a four. You are defending this queen is also in a nice square. Maybe you can the rooks can be here. connected now. Yeah. Mm. Rooks can be connected. Mm. Quite logical. Quite logical. Agree. Now f four. After c five f four. Knight e d seven. Bishop e four. I just simply you have to develop. Yeah. And this is sometimes the problem in King's Indian for black. Okay, if uh, white does nothing and okay, yeah. black just sort of implodes. Yeah, this is what I was actually wanting. Like, I like this type of style that I will just play quietly, just stop my opponent's counter play, and he will suffer. Right. Uh, he or she will suffer and lose. So that's right. like uh, fun to play. Uh, other than, uh, and like doing tactics, like you have to make your own mind work and yeah like kind of if you just stop your opponent's counter play mm -hmm. it's actually it's not always so easy like Correct. it's okay. quite difficult but when it's possible like i feel very happy yeah, it's like very it's very relaxing so, yeah yeah relaxing and satisfying so okay queen a5 uh usually what happens in kid is i think uh, white starts to push on the king side and yeah. Black tries to get some play in the queen side. Okay, but queen actually, side one of the main black. plans in the Benoni structures is white wants the break uh, with f4 e5. But here, as my pawn is already on the king side, mm -hmm. uh, uh, one of the natural plan is to go for and some kind of attack from the king's side. Right. Correct. So, uh, rook f e1. Okay, and just developing still now. Yes, uh, very simple developing stuff. Just yeah, queen c2. c2. Now the point of this move is actually like doesn't have such a point because I was actually like just uh, reshuffling my pieces and mm -hmm. actually uh, if you see properly, I couldn't see such an idea for black. Like black is like what can you do if he pushes the e pawn? The d pawn will be weak. D5 will be an outpost, so it's mm -hmm. not good. Other than that, black doesn't have any obvious breaks because uh, if he tries b5, one simple a4 can stop it. Right. It's not possible right now. Maybe he prepares. I right. I yeah, say he prepares something, but after a4, nothing, nothing is going work. to work out. And so I have plenty of time. So I was just re regrouping my pieces. Right. And the queen doesn't do much on e2. It, uh, it doesn't have the job of protecting c4 anymore. And I want to pile up the rooks on the e5. Like I want to double it there to uh, pressure on the e7. So the queen is disturbing. So I want to move the queen away. And another idea is that in the future, I want to get some f5 break. So the queen may help there. Right. So f5, uh, the queen will support f5 break. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. okay. It seems uh, it is sort of in your hands what you want to do because yeah. black doesn't seem to have too many active plans at the moment. Yeah. Right. So, okay, A6. 
Okay, just preparing the five. I'm assuming. Bishop D two. Yeah, actually, yeah. I saw here that the bishop wasn't doing much on E three. Like right. I, I again, I have plenty of time. That's the main thing here. Mm -hmm. Time is a big factor. Like and then now my idea is to double the rooks on the E file, and black is not going to get B five because right. I have knight into B five. Yeah. So knight into B five is there a simple discovery? Uh, and okay, this is attack. So this pawn also is quite a bit weak, I should say, because e6 is yeah. not really possible. Yeah. So maybe she would have to play something like. Uh, yeah, it's this. really passive, and like white has all the time in the world. Correct. So rook b8, h3, just. Uh, okay. Sort of yeah, just like this was idea. just like uh, one another move to like. Uh, make black understand that black is helpless. Like I must bring something like h3, and black mm -hmm. can't do anything. Correct. So it also like playing like this uh, move. Okay, this has a, an obvious idea to mm -hmm. go something like g4 for an kingside attack. But Correct. it also makes my opponent feel the pressure that I don't have any plans. Mm -hmm. What the hell is white doing with h3? But I don't have anything to do. Correct. So agreed. So it's nice. So uh, okay, it's always nice to play moves like this, and okay, this is sort of a very nice position which White has gotten out of the opening actually. Yeah. So Queen C seven, A four. Okay, now you stop. B4. Okay, now so, I am just stopping B four. Yep, and uh, the, it was I guess one of the main sources of counterplay for Black. That is not yeah. happening. So B six. So now I think Black doesn't have any counterplay at all. Mm -hmm. Right, and uh, Rook E two K. Okay. Now just rook b7, just wanting to make b5 work at any cost somehow. It's and also idea. maybe supporting e7 somehow. Yeah, that's but, also. Uh, I think like it's like uh, black. Like black can only support, but I have more plans to attack on the king side after Correct. I get my pieces to the uh, right squares. Yeah, it is not. It's not like it is your only plan to uh, sort of yeah. uh, attack this pawn. There are many other plans which you have. Yeah. So rook a even knight b8 g4. Now yeah, you, now I go in. Yeah, now you sort of. And again, like it attack. seems like white can make some weaknesses, but actually there are no ways to attack it. Black's pieces are so passive that, like the queen can't move anywhere. Fruitful. Mm -hmm. The rook also can't move because of the queen. Yeah, and this knight also is doing nothing. Really sad. Yeah, very sad. Bishop h8, which is just waiting, I guess. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. and another idea is if I play g5, she has that knight h5 magician. But anyways, I am not going to commit. It's really committal g5. You are giving up f5. Correct. And, uh, and okay, it is not necessary. No? You can just wait for now. Yeah. So not to do yeah. something so committal. So bishop f3, just supporting this square for now. Yeah, actually, I, I had some plans like bishop f3 is okay, just a waiting move. And now actually, I'm asking black what to do. Because I am threatening g5 now, and I don't know where will black move the knight. Right. And, and it's just uh, like I have to do nothing, but all that is being done is black has to worry. Right. So queen d8 in the position. And okay, knight d7. Okay. Now just king g2. Okay. Another waiting move, asking black now what will you do? Like, just it's like I am still improving my position. King is better on g2 than g1. It also supports h3, and some right. it's look it looks better. The king is also developed, kind right. of. The king is also and if possible, if needed, I mean, I don't think it would be needed. I I can get some a doubling of rooks on the h file also. Right. Yeah. Might that might be a possibility. Now the basically the entry point to the h file is clear right now. Yeah. Something like this maybe at some point. Yeah. Okay, maybe not now or something. Yeah, and it is. It sort of seems like black is in a zugzwang position, and slowly the moves are running yeah. out one by one. Something like yeah. that. Yeah, ah, this is really fun to play for white. Right? Absolutely. So, uh, okay, after king g two came in the move b five. Finally, like she is now frustrated. Actually, she doesn't have any moves left. Right, so she has to do something. Just gives up the pawn. Uh, she just gives up the pawn. I but still, I think this doesn't give her much counterplay. Okay, uh, like I took C into B5. There is a point because I want to keep the pass pawn. Uh, a, a pawn is an outside pass pawn. Later, it can be very useful. So okay. I just want to keep it as B5 is also firmly protected. Mm -hmm. So it's just so, good to keep it. 
absolutely defense protected and also defense is not attacked at the moment so yes uh, uh, no ways to attack right correct so b6 okay i think this wasn't necessary b6 but okay everything looks quite fine here right so knight a6 and okay this pawn as you mentioned is quite a strong pawn yeah and i actually wanted to go knight b5 mm -hmm. like uh, making her think once again that my rook is also helpless d6 also hanging correct and uh, knight b6 here defending d6 f7 yeah so and now game f5 sort of the, yeah uh, king side like is such is my mobility and space mm -hmm. advantage like i can play in both flanks correct bishop e5 and my pieces are positioned like ideally mm -hmm. they are all in the dream squares of the life basically yeah right. and, and now okay. actually f5 ha has a point actually f5 mm -hmm. actually pressures upon g6 but another thing which i saw obviously is that it leaves the e5 square but actually black can't make use of it because if i just move my bishop to e4 as i did mm -hmm. uh, if I, I don't have anything i just have f4 to drive the bishop away so correct and okay uh, this is the sort of the advantage of double pawns yeah you can push and so it double like pawn is not always bad absolutely so. double pawns are they sort of give dynamic activity in many positions as yeah. for example in this position f4 is a very yes. nice move to have all because you play yes. d3 in the opening yes right so okay queen d7 f into g6 f into g6 and here come the tactics here right now the tactics start with bishop d6 okay so like yeah. where you completely actually i was planning it from f5 only when i played f5 okay so uh, from this point only you had some sort of idea to maybe sack a piece on sack on g6 yeah and uh, start the attack so like did yeah. you calculate uh, all the possibilities uh, like after you oh, said yeah it calculated most of it but like it looked like it should work right because such a position is this it should work like right. right. how so can it is, not work yeah how can it not work exactly because all of the black pieces are on the queen side queen is there yeah and side, not doing anything right. and you all of your pieces are coming into the attack right now so, yeah, uh, my knight is uh, controlling the queen side, and all the other pieces are in attack. Correct. So in this case, it is not too much of a matter of calculation, but just knowing that okay, this intuition. has to work. Intuition. Intuition is yeah. correct. Yeah, intuition. because if the, like F G six actually, mm -hmm. there is one simple move rook e five. Rook e five. Okay. And, yeah. Uh, After like takes, takes, I have queen G six. And now, uh, when uh, that goes king h8, I just have some simple rook e5, and rook h5 mate is unstoppable. Wow, that, that's really beautiful, actually. This uh, move rook e5 is also very nice. So you're sacrificing yeah. the house, and okay, king is completely stripped away from any Helpless. other attacks. Yeah. And okay, rook e5, and this is actually I just calculated this and it's just. <laughs> yeah, this is very pretty, actually. Okay, in yeah. the game she played bishop g7. She didn't yeah. take it. Yeah, yeah. It was stopped. obviously losing. Right. So okay, bishop h7, king f8, just bishop. I f7. actually just wanted to put the king in a uh, awkward position so that I can also like pile up on the f pawn later. Correct. Okay, after bishop f5, she played queen d8, and now just queen yes. f8. Just bringing all of yeah. the pieces slowly. Okay, not yeah, slowly. Yeah, then the queen there, can come actually. to yeah. All the time is there, like okay, black can't do anything. Even if he wins all the pawns in the queen side, still white is better. Correct, because the king side is completely like there is no protection of the king, sort of. Yeah, even and if I just no uh, keep on pushing the h pawn, black is lost. Correct. So maybe something like this is uh, just a simple. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Okay, c four. Okay, now what good is that going to do? Actually, win f three here. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, King G8, Bishop G6. There's uh, many ways I think are there to win, but uh, simply uh, this is a simple one. I don't have to think much. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, like always, uh, when the clock time is there, you mm -hmm. feel much more comfortable and mm -hmm. you have like much more confidence in like I can win it anyway. So it's just good to keep the time on the clock because I suffer from it the most. Ah, uh, time pressure so have, that makes like, a lot problems, of problems. Uh, you basically yeah. get into time pressure a lot. Yeah. 
So okay. in this game, I was not getting into it because this was a really comfortable game. Right. So, so you didn't have I was to really like happy. maybe uh, invest too much time into thinking. And okay, that's a really yeah. nice thing to be happy about. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And now this is just a simple way, like just eliminating the defender, and mm-hmm. it's this all is, gone. This uh, is sort of the only defender of the king side, and if it is yeah. covered off, then nothing is there. It's gone. Right, and uh, black took knight a four, but this pawn is uh, it's of no use basically. You take yeah. it, leave it. Uh, it doesn't <laughs> matter. Bishop g seven, king g seven, and now knight g four. A lot of ideas coming up. This knight c6, can... rook e7, queen f4, queen g5, yeah. everything lot, is there. A lot of things coming up. So queen b6, queen and f4. just simple queen f4, queen g5, and uh, black has no way to stop it. Right. So rook h8, but okay, queen g5, king f5, now just rook into e7. Yeah, this rook is e7. lost. Queen e7 is complete. And okay, a nice move to finish it off. So the yeah, rook many rook moves rook. are here, uh, two nice moves. Right, there are quite there are quite a lot of moves which finish it off, but okay. This one was aesthetically pleasing. So okay, right to play. What would you do? So Shapojo, what's the move? Uh, I played knight e6 here. And like the point is every uh, way uh, like it's setting queen f8 mate, queen g5 mate, and if black takes an e6, it's bishop e6 mate. So uh, absolutely nothing to do actually. And Rook e6 was also the same maybe. It's also losing, completely yeah. losing for black. Rook e6. Anyways, okay. everything is winning. Everything is winning actually. Rook e6 also a nice move to finish it off. But okay, everything is winning and in this position after knight e6, your opponent resigned the game. Okay. Yeah. Right. So okay, this was a very powerful victory. How did you feel after the game? Okay, not much. I have many more rounds to go. Like, I need to, like, okay. Uh, it's a really good learning that even when you lose, you should not be that sad. Like, obviously, you feel sad after losing, right. but you should just cheer up yourself. Like, you should not give up hope. Uh, how much point you are, like, uh, uh, like, if you are sad, nothing, it can help in nothing, actually. It right. actually helps if you are just really positive. Mm-hmm. Positive vibes, I, uh, what I learned from this tournament is always good. Like, always keeping yourself cheered up and always uh, like having fun, playing the game by enjoying is really good. It, it's a, it also helps us to enjoy the game more when we are positive. Correct. This is, I think, a very important uh, lesson, actually. In, you just have to be positive. Of course, things might not always go your way. It happens that... Uh, but it must go sometime if we are positive all the time. Absolutely. That is the important point. If you just uh, keep your nerves calm, be positive about it. Okay. Every loss you, every loss you have, that is a learning experience. Right? Yeah. So in this tournament overall, I guess there was no point in which you like uh, maybe were a bit sad or something. Yeah, I think uh, I'm uh, uh, like a bit disappointed in one point. Like I wanted to uh, become undefeated in the standard classical, mm-hmm. but actually <laughs> I lost one round yeah. and it was like a little bit sad because uh, the same thing happened. Like I was I was having the initiative, I was having the advantage from the middle game till mm-hmm. the end game, and at the last moment I blundered in time pressure and lost very badly. Uh, that's that's always sad and uh, but the main important thing is you came back from it you kept your positive mind yeah and you and yeah you it was the penultimate the round and the last round i managed to win and that too uh, it ended with uh, i like uh, aesthetically very pleasing sacrifice of rook f6 again some back rank issues like that only like okay. black can't take with it with the pawn so it was quite nice to finish off it like that and Actually, I was very happy when the results, final results came out. Right. So, uh, like, after you after you finished your game, you were still not, like, completely sure if you had won or not. Yeah, right. actually, yeah, the first board was going on. Okay. So, uh, the first board was drawish, kind of. Like, mm-hmm. if it uh, would end in a draw, mm-hmm. like, uh, I was, I thought I would become the champion. And actually, it ended in a draw. Okay, and that's and that's basically after that result, you were the champion. Right? Yeah. 
right so okay that must have been a very nice feeling again uh, winning in individual events let's say uh, when you are playing some other tournament it's fine yeah. it's very good but when you are representing the nation it's yeah it's really a very proud moment in uh, like i could bring two goals for my country like so i am happy about it i could uh, fly the flag high and get the national anthem two times in rapidos it was quite a nice feeling Like I lost one round uh, mm -hmm. there also. That also by blundering at the last moment. But it was okay. I managed to win some nice games there, and it's quite a nice feeling. Like actually, when I won the rapid on the first day, it actually cheered up my mood a little bit. So yeah, Let that is. Let me stay positive. You are basically after the tournament, okay? After the main event begins, like before the main yeah. event begins, sorry, to have uh like such a feeling that okay. Uh, yes. I have started off very positive. I have started off with a big win in the rapid event. Yeah, and that's obviously a confidence boost for sure. Yeah, and uh, overall, uh, like when are we returning actually? Uh, to India. Actually, we'll uh, return tomorrow. Tomorrow okay. afternoon is our flight. Okay. And all of the team, all of the players together, they will return, right? Yeah, like some are going to Chennai and some are coming to Kolkata. So okay. we'll go to Kolkata. We we'll go to Kolkata and okay. For now, I guess it's a bit of rest before the next big event or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm expecting to play national sub junior followed by national under thirteen. Okay. And uh, when is that going to happen? Actually, in November. Yeah, okay. it's in November and December. Okay, so November, December, uh, you have this also in November. There's the Tata Steel, so that is always an event to look forward to. Will you visit? Yeah. I think I can't because our national. Uh, I will obviously try to visit, like because I I missed it last time. Like uh, actually there was an event there I couldn't play because was the entry was closed. I was really sad about it. So, yeah. uh, if there is something like that, I really want to participate. Uh, like if only the national is not in that time. Right. So okay, if the national doesn't clash, we of course hope to see you in Kolkata. And Anand is going to be the mentor of all of the players this yeah. time. Yeah. So a yes. very nice feeling, and of course, really Chris India will be there as the commentators, Saga Shah yeah. and Tanya Sachdev, and everyone. Yeah. So, uh, if you are in Kolkata, do try to visit, and of course. Yeah, sure. I'll be uh, very happy to do so. Right, and Shaporjo, a uh, big, big congratulations once again for two of these uh, gold medals. And Thank you I so much. You All the best in all of your upcoming tournaments. May you keep growing. Yeah. Ah, uh, thank you so much to Chess Base India for giving me this opportunity. And once again, a big thanks to All India Chess Federation and the whole Indian delegation and all the team members. And I'm especially th thanking and I'm really grateful to Alekin Chess Club from where I have learned from the very beginning, and all my coaches who have helped me grow up from my childhood, and all my senior players. Who have helped me in the game, and also a great thanks goes to my school for supporting me, uh, Ashokal Girls at Secondary School, for okay. supporting me balance my chess career and my studies as well. I love studying too. So, so a lot great. of that's great to know actually. You yeah. like you are balancing it between uh, studies and chess. Okay, at some point maybe you have to make sort of a decision, but right now it's going yeah. very smoothly. Yeah, yeah. Like after offline class has started, it's a bit difficult. But as long as you like studying, it's it goes on. No, this is I When think true for anything. The school is really helpful. Classmates are really helpful, so it goes on. Okay. So okay, Shapojo. Uh, a big congratulations again, and uh, okay. Yeah, good thank luck. you so much. Yeah, good luck in yeah. all of your future events. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much again.